I'm Dara Halladier. I'm with the Biting Truth Ministry, and this is Practical Proverbs for the Older Student. We're on Lesson 56 today, the History of Work Habits. We're starting a new unit today as we talk about work, work and wealth, work and welfare, work and play, the history of work habits. So we're going to take, I think it's five or six lessons here, and talk about work. Now I have a secret for you. This is, this is hard to understand, but God created us to work. He gave us a need to have purposeful um, work. God asked Adam and Eve to work even before sin came into their lives. They were to cultivate the garden. They were to um, name the animals. And so God gave them work. Then after sin, God said, you'll have to till the, the earth and all those things. So hard, hard work came after sin as well, but it was a part of the original creation. We were created to work. Now, when we say work, most of you think physical um, work, but there is mental work, physical work, social work, emotional work. Um, and God has created you and he's going to put desires within your heart um, to do certain things. Um, I, I have a lawyer, a computer programmer, a computer technologist, a personal trainer, and a pilot, a um, missionary pilot. And my five boys that we raised, they all have different bents and different talents and different desires and different spiritual gifting. Um, and so it's not that one should look at a baby and say, you're going to grow up and be a doctor, you're going to grow up and be a lawyer, or you're going to grow up and be a plumber. No, as you grow and you develop and you learn what it is that you like to do, you might have a real bent towards engineering or music or computers or people. And maybe you want to, to run a daycare or maybe small children. Maybe you want to be a, a pediatric nurse or a doctor. So, you know, this is the time of your life where it's time to begin looking at all of the different career choices out there. You're going to be spending eight hours a day, five days a week at least, doing work. So you need to find something that you love to do um, and get the education or uh, talent, the skills through tech schools or apprenticeships or whatever it is that you decide to do. But work is part of who we are and God created us to work. And it even tells us in the Bible that there's going to be work for us to do after um, we get to heaven. I was reading that just this morning. It says in Revelation chapter 2, it says, verse 26, He who overcomes and he who keeps my deeds until the end, to him I will give authority over the nations, and he shall rule them with the rod of iron as the vessels of the potter and broken to pieces. As he has given, gotten authority from his father, he's going to give us authority to rule over nations. And in, in another place, I think it's in Corinthians, it says that we're going to rule over angels. And so we are created to work. And so let's look at a couple of verses real quick in Colossians 3. We're going to be using these verses quite a bit over the next couple of days. But it says in verse Colossians 3, verse 17, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to him, to God the Father. And then right behind that is verse 23, whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Lord rather than for men. So whatever it is you choose to do, I wanted to be a wife and a mom. I got to be a wife and a mom. I, it was wonderful. For, that's who I am. That's who I was created to be. I got to pour my life into five boys. Um, I got to homeschool them. I got to make meals for them, clean their bathrooms, do all those wonderful things that moms get to do, do their laundry. And I did it as unto the Lord with great thanksgiving for each and every life that God allowed me to have um, to, to give birth to. And now I get to be just a wife and pour myself into my husband. I do teach Bible studies and piano lessons and all that on the side. So I do other work as well and gardening and some of those things. But being a wife and a, a mom is a a great option for some of you girls as well. But whatever you choose to do, it doesn't matter um, if it's a high position, a low position. Um, I know godly people who are janitors. I know godly people who are lawyers and doctors. So wherever you find yourself, whatever work you end up pursuing, do it with all your heart as unto the Lord, knowing that God created you to work. Um, but the key to all this is balance. 
you've heard of a workaholic, someone who gets their self-esteem from their work, and so that's what they do. They just work and work and work and work and work. But God tells us also to observe the Sabbath day, to keep it holy, as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord God, in it you shall not do any work. So about one-seventh of our time should be work, our rest, and the rest of the time we should give time to work. Now, I, I looked at this and broke it down by hours in a day. By the time you sleep eight hours and you work eight hours, you still have eight hours left to eat, to watch television, to play, to play, play on a ball team or whatever it is you want to do, music. So there's plenty of time to play, but we need to keep it in balance. Um, make sure that you're balancing that time out, time with friends, um, emotional time, social time, physical time, etc. cetera. Um, when at work, work. When at play, play. So what, we're going to ask in today's lesson, what type of work do you like to do best? Physical, social, or mental? And you could even put emotional if you think you might want to be a psychologist or a Christian counselor. And then we ask what type of physical work, social work, mental work do you like to do? What do you like to do for recreation? Make sure that you have that balance. Um, and then go ahead and draw pictures for Proverbs 3, 25 through 26 in Appendix C. And we will be going over that at the end of this week, at the end of the next five lessons. You have a great day and work heartily as unto the Lord right now in your schoolwork. Thanks.